Barstool Sports. Our tight end. Brandon Walker. Mostly sports. Welcome to Mostly Sports. I am Connor Griffin filling in for Mark Titus. He is Brandon Walker. It is Tuesday, April 9th here in Chicago. We are live. And before we get started, we want to talk to you about Jägermeister. We got another ad for Jägermeister, and they wanted to mix, mix things up this time so we avoid getting all boring. Uh, and so we don't have to do the same ad read every single time. So for this ad, we're just going to chant, as we always do. Ice cold shots. Ready? Are you ready, Brandon? Ice cold shots. Why are you pointing at me? Well, I'm just saying, you know. We're, we're ice cold shots on the table. He's. Well, no, let's pass it around. He's damn that's cold. Yeah, you let's know, pass it around. We're mixing it up today. Well, who, what, what am I, ice cold shots or damn that's cold? I'm going to say ice cold shots. Well, okay, you're, say, you're, okay, you're saying ice cold shots. You go damn that's cold. When what I do actually, you say? Then I go ice cold shots. I take it back. I want to do damn that's cold. Then why did you. You go. You want damn that's cold? Yes, you go. So it's me or Ebo for ice cold shots. Whatever you want, Brandon. Go ahead, Ebo. Ice, ice cold, cold shots. Damn, that's cold. I. You didn't chant it. You said it in a jaunty way. We're supposed to be Let's run the chanting. Triangle, off, triangle offense really quick. Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice cold. Okay, shots. so yeah. it, not everybody's going to have the same thing every yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like How that. many times around? Two? Three? We'll do two. We'll do two. Yeah, yeah. We'll do two. All right. I'll start. Okay. Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Damn, ice cold. Love it. Love it. All right. So wherever you're at, if you're hanging with friends or at the bar, or maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just mostly sports stuff, call the shots. Cheers with ice cold Jägermeister. Jägermeister, pardon me. And remember to check out Jägermeister at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister liqueur, 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Mass Jägermeister US, White Plains, New York. And finally, Brandon has come back to his job. How's it going, Brandon? <laughs> what? To to my job? Yeah, you're back. I'm excited to have you back. To my to my job. The way you said it though, you didn't say to the show or to the family. You said to my job. Well, I've been working. Okay. I I I was working. I know you have. I know you have. I just I was in Philadelphia. I I'm in rock mode. Why are you back? In, why are you in rock mode? I don't know. When I, have I, you ever gotten in rock mode? Dude, I, I'm jazzed up. WrestleMania. Rock was back. He was back last night too. Uh, but we, we could get to that later. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? Ebo, can I? It doesn't matter what you want to talk about. Turn off the lights. Bring the Undertaker in. Get him <laughs> out of here. I'm kidding, Brandon. What do you want to talk about? I might hit you in the fucking face. <laughs> I'm done with rock mode. I'm done with rock. Ebo, mode. when when we sat down to do this show some seven or eight minutes ago, I was stacking my papers. I had the Jägermeister ad in front of me. I was prepared to start the show. Do you remember what happened next? Uh, Yeah, I think you got your show hijacked. Connor rolled his chair over here, reached over, grabbed the Jägermeister ad, and said, I'm Titus. That, that's how the show has worked when I've filled in. But you're not I'm, Titus. You're... I'm not Titus. Nobody could ever be Mark Titus. But I figured since I'm in his role today, he always does the Jägermeister read. I'll do the Jägermeister read. And I love Jägermeister, and I wanted to do it. Anyway... Can somebody explain Yukon to me? Uh, not the not the geographical territory in Canada. The, the car. The not the car either. Um although those things can spin on the interstate and you're just fine apparently. Um but Yukon the basketball team. This is their sixth championship since nineteen ninety nine. Not only that, not only is that the most championships since then, they're the first back-to-back -back since 2006 and 2007. Well, you look at 2006 and 2007, you see a Florida team that brought back everybody from 2006. So it made sense. If they were good enough to win a championship in 2006 and they brought back everybody, they could win it again. UConn didn't do that. UConn won it last year with a team, changed teams almost completely, not completely, but almost completely, and won it again. They've got 12 straight. They're not winning championships. They're beating the shit out of everybody. There have been great teams in the history of college basketball in my life. Great teams. Phenomenal teams that win by four, that win by six, that have some close games. UConn has won back-to-back -back titles with zero close games. Explain this to me. 
like I'm five. It does not make any sense, the run that they've been on. It's one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. 12 straight games in the tournament. Yes, they've won by double digits. They're also, Evo, they're 12-0 and against the spread. Yeah, they haven't – they've covered every spread in the last – Two years. 50 days, yeah. Yeah. It's tournament. insanity. And pretty much this game went, I think, how a lot of people thought it would go, where it might be close early on in the game, and then you knew yeah. that UConn was just going to take over, especially – Edie was on fire playing some of the best basketball he's ever right. played in the first half. And you're thinking, oh, my God, he's getting whatever he wants. And then you look up at the score when the half was all said and done. I think it was a six-point deficit. Purdue yeah. was still down. And it was like, okay, yeah, this is going to get ugly really Well, really the last two days we've seen classic t- uh, <laughs> individuals can't beat teams. Uh, th- this whole thing with Caitlin Clark and is she the GOAT and is she this, she, she was out there in a gunfight with a knife. She scored 30 points, and she was exhausted by the second half because she can't make her teammates better than they are uh, or at least good enough to compete with South Carolina, who was way better. Zach Eady had 37 points last night. Yeah. But the rest of his teammates were pretty garbage, and, and they were not good enough to beat UConn. I don't know if it was that they were garbage or they just played exactly into what UConn wanted. I think there was a designated approach coming into this game. We're going to let Edie operate how he wants to operate. Yeah, sure. Not double That's what I'm saying. But but I'm saying they weren't – Let Edie get his. Those other guys can't beat me. The teammates, I don't even think we're getting the opportunity to beat them, really, because the perimeter defense from UConn was fantastic. They were – I mean, the rotations, everything. They were right on the ball every single time. One of those guards from Purdue got it on the outside. You texted the group last night and said, I've taken copious amounts of note, uh, copious notes on this game. In Sharpie, actually. Yes. Give me your notes. Okay, yeah. This these, is my favorite way. Sharpie notes? Th- these yeah, are, I didn't have a pen at home. These are now my notes. Okay. So here are my notes from the game last night. Okay? All right. Is this your top ten or are these your notes? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're if you nine. make nine notes, don't you just go ahead and make a tenth? Uh, that's funny, Brandon. This is – flip the page. There's more than nine notes, brother. Oh, my God. It's first half, second half. I split them up into two pages. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite way to watch a game, alone in my apartment with a notepad in my hand and just taking observations on the game. I love oh, it. Oh, ta ta do you do that for games you're not going to talk about the next day on the on big games? Yeah. What? Okay. Just so I could have these opinions moving. Forward. Okay, so Super Bowl Fifty Four, or maybe our, or, or the, the NCAA championship game three years ago, mm-hmm. right? Baylor Gonzaga. You weren't going to be on the air anywhere ne- the next day. Did you take notes? Yes. Um, <laughs> the best notes I ever took was Clemson LSU in the 20- 2019 yeah, 2019 national championship. No reason I did not need to talk about that game. Why at all. were those the best notes? God, dude, they were so comprehensive, and I felt like I was really like getting the gist of that game from start to finish. This game, so I you thought, really saw that game? Yes, yes, yes. I I was living and breathing Clemson LSU. This game, I was very proud. Do of those notes that. still exist anywhere? Um, no, do you file your notes? No, this was back in my college dorm, so I don't think so. Okay, you didn't file those notes. No, no. Brandon, let me tell you this. Last night, I had no notes. It was just UConn. No notes for UConn. That's no. all you got. It's yeah, just UConn. UConn. Yeah. No notes. They were incredible. Do you have? Can you access any old notes? I'd like to. I'll try and find them some for tomorrow's show. I don't know if I still have the notepads, but I I always write them down. It's never on my phone. When y'all were in high school, did y'all still pass notes to 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 girls? Notes. Was notes no. still a thing? Because now you text now, right? No, it was like that was right when cell phones were becoming like less yeah. taboo to have in school, and so the thing was like. So you can just flat out have a cell phone in school now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's not not a big deal. Some teachers try and regulate it, but at the end of the day, there's not much that they could do. You're fighting a losing battle there. Exactly. I mean, Shout out to the teachers watching. I still I grew up in the in the notes era where where. If I had a I had a fifth period class and my girlfriend had a fifth period class, we'd meet in the hall between classes, exchange notes, and that's and that that was a, a more simple, pure time in America when you we did, didn't have eclipses before computers and stuff. <laughs> it, yeah, I don't know. I was gonna hold off on this. <laughs> what? Who was that voice? What? Before computers and stuff. You have a camera for yourself. Lucas. I was going to bring it up eventually. Here are my notes, Ebo. <laughs> um, 
ED caught in decision making defensively by Cam Spencer. I thought Cam Spencer early on set the perfect tone for UConn, where Ebo pointed it out to in our group chat. ED was having a real trouble defending the pick and roll. He was caught in conflict, didn't mm. know whether to come up, stop ball, stay back, protect the rim. And I think it set the right tone for UConn, where they were not going to be scared at all of Zach ED. UConn not double teaming ED. ED was feasting, but Purdue wasn't shooting from deep. Yep. And again, that was the whole strategy. Hurley said it after the game. Let Edie do whatever he wants to do inside. We're not going to double. As long as the shooters don't get going, we're fine. Samson Thompson was put in early foul trouble. These are my notes. And? That doesn't seem worthy of a note. Well, because I was. That just doesn't seem worthy of a note. I was marking it as a reference so I wouldn't forget it. And I was using it also as fuel to why Donovan Klingon, I thought, had such a great game, even though he was. Is it Klingon or Klingon? <laughs> it's, it's Klingon. I don't acknowledge the Klingons. Just like ta, 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 ta. Lucas, can I get a timeout? Can I get a timeout? Yeah, timeout. All right. What does he mean? He doesn't acknowledge the Klingons. Like they're they're a thing on a, on on the TV show. They're in Andor, right? No, they're not. They're, they're, well, I think they're in Hoth, but they're they're they're. How can you not acknowledge something that they're they exist in in the world of of fictional space? So how could you not acknowledge Klingons? Listen, I don't acknowledge. Hey, hey, hey! I've got a timeout. Lucas, any, any? All right, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's I'm, why you're the best in the business, I brother. Wasn't, I wasn't listening. I was, I was trying to figure <laughs> out what a timeout meant from the chat. He he moved the microphone close to his face just to say nothing. <laughs> I was thinking about what I wanted to say. All right, now you're talking too much. All right, <laughs> a time in. Um, what do you mean you don't recognize Klingons? I don't acknowledge Roman Reigns, but he exists. Anyway. Not I anyway. I'm, I'm in charge of the show now, okay? I'm in charge of the show. What, what? <laughs> do Klingons exist? Yes, but I do not acknowledge them. What does that mean? I had a, I had a teacher, going back to teachers, uh, who she believed in hand sanitizer but she did not acknowledge it because she thought it was bad for your body she thought that you would should you should be fighting off germs right, can on we your own. Can, can we can we be honest and we have an honest conversation about hand sanitizer all of a sudden can we just real quick just just let's let's talk about hand sanitizer for for years and years and years and decades soap and water was fine and it was fine. We'd go. We'd go to the bathroom. We'd we'd do our hands, and we'd be done. We'd wipe them off. We'd go back to where we are. Now, all it, it, in like in like two thousand four. I don't know when it was. Nineteen ninety eight, two thousand four, two thousand ten. They just started selling hand sanitizer, and now that's the we all immediately switched to that accepted form of hand washing. What did they do to us? Did they? Did they? Wh what did they do? I think it's big germ. They got in the way. They want you to get more sick. Not big germ. Big germ wouldn't be. Big germ is is the enemy of hand no, sanitizer. Big germ's in on it. Big germ is. Yeah. Yeah. You have to endure to become strong. And they don't want you to endure. So so the people that made billions selling us soap decided, hey, we can still sell them soap for the bathroom, but now we're going to sell them soap that we can put just amongst them. Right? And they doubled their profits. Correct? Yeah. Speaking of hands, did you see uh, Dan Hurley put his hands on that player? Is that that player? You mean Zach Eady or no, 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 no? Well, they were up fifteen points. Well, they... hold on, you don't. That's not in the note. It's second page. It was second half, buddy. We're still in the first half notes. Though. We're still in the first half notes. What, what I'm trying. You... I'm trying to get back to the game. Okay, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> uh, Klingon couldn't do anything with Eady on him. <laughs> Edie left the floor for a few possessions. It kickstarted a 9-2 UConn run. It's, are some of these worthy of notes? Uh, Braden Smith got going towards the end of the half. Hurley immediately called timeout. And that's when you knew what the entire strategy for UConn was. To win the game? Yes. But to make sure that their shooters, Purdue shooters, were staying in check. Because Braden Smith, I think he had a jumper that was wide open from the elbow. And then the very next possession... He had an open three-pointer that he knocked down. It was the first three-pointer that they made the entire half. Pace of play favors UConn. Edie gassed late. Yeah. No, Edie, as early as the end of the first half, I thought was done. Only two threes attempted by Purdue in first half. Yeah. And Edie played amazing. Purdue still down six. All right. Yeah. Now yeah. We'll go to our second half note. These are just trends of the game that I, I thought would be important. Edie wasn't a factor offensively to start the half. UConn had all the momentum. He was irrelevant for the first 
four minutes of the second half. Just, just. Whoa, 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 whoa! What'd you just say? For the first four minutes. Because it, then I went to the under sixteen. Here's my next note: Ed irrelevant for the first four minutes of the half. Yes. That's kind of. That's kind of uh, redundant for the first note, don't you think? What was the first note again? Ed wasn't a factor offensively to start the half. Okay. Yeah. Even well, irrelevant for the first four minutes. Irrelevant also. That's two notes. Irrelevant also factors in the defensive side of the floor. I, I do not think he was as much a of a presence. A little too flowery with your note. I think you're you're kidding. That didn't require two notes. That's all I'm saying. Maybe, maybe we could continue on. Back to back lobs to Samson Johnson to push the uh, to push the lead to double digits. And that's when you knew that Edie was no longer the same force that he was in the first half. Now I, I'm worried because in the first half the guy's name was Samson Thompson, but in the second half his name is Samson Johnson. Did I write that? So what happened to to Samson that he changed his name at halftime? I'm gonna be honest, guys. Uh, I did have a beer as I was writing these second half notes. You had you had that. That's on me. You had a beer. that is on me. I, the second half notes are off to a bad start. I'm not gonna lie to yeah. you. Yeah, I, I I saw where this game was going. I said screw it. I'm gonna crack open a beer, and uh, it took a toll on my notes. So I apologize. Second media timeout. Edie still without a field goal. Which yeah, I, I went back. I don't know if that was true. I might have missed one. ED airball in all caps, followed by travel. That was fun. ED finally got a dunk at 7.30 left. Were you watching the ED cam? You didn't watch? And These are all ED notes. And then Hurley pushing the player. Yeah, I couldn't remember who he pushed. And I, I shame on me. I you were taking play. notes during the game. You were watching the game. But again, I, I had the beer in my hand. At this point, I was like, this game's over. And I, I started to tail off. Yeah, you did. You really started tail off in the second half. Like I said, this was not 2019 Clemson LSU. This was not my best performance, but I do think I was seeing it well. Hey, Mark. What the fuck is going? Is, is, is Connor trying to be me? Is try Connor's trying to be you, yes. Connor said he is Mark Titus today. What the fuck is going on? We're talking hoops. You just made, like, a, a, a full list of notes, Connor, like that? Are you? Yeah. Are you okay? Who authorized you to do that? Nobody <laughs> did, Mark. Nobody did. I hadn't. Why does he, Brandon? Why, when you're gone, Connor stays on the couch? When I'm gone, he takes my seat immediately. I did ask him. I asked him to sit there, but all I really wanted was for the camera shot. I didn't mean for him to take over your life. This is insane, dude. I I, I turn on the show for five minutes, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Do you see these notes? Like, Look at these notes. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, Mark, I I was trying to get in your shoes last night. Why? Because I love the way he approaches the game, and I wanted to analyze it. Why not just it and... be Connor Griffin? Why be Mark Titus? Be... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm... Fucking Wally Pippi, Connor. I see it. No, Titus, I do respect you a lot, and I hate to glaze. But, yeah, maybe this is a little bit of a uh, a man crush I have on Titus for his knowledge of the game, and I wanted to just no, no, emulate that. that. You're trying to replace me, Connor. I see no, 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 no. Yeah, Brandon, we have to kill Connor. We'll talk <laughs> off air about it, but we have to kill Connor. All right, today you want me to wait for you to get back? Uh, wait for me to get back. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna help kill him. But we have to kill him. Um, good luck with the rest of the show, though. You're doing great, Connor. But we, we are gonna kill you. Thank you. I look forward to it. All right. All right. Anything to say to me? Forward. Just, just me and you. Uh, I heard WrestleMania sucked, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It's fun how he called into the show today. Anyway, you want to get back to the the notes? You're taking these notes, by the way, like um. It reminds me like you're on the beat for the UConn school newspaper or something, and then yeah. you're going to get yeah. some quotes after like you, the game you had to, in the space. You had to write a game story afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I used to do that. And then I you did too. backfill with quotes, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a good idea. Next time there's a big game, well, you're going to write a game story. Yeah, that's totally fine. You want an AP-style format? What? Wouldn't want anything else. All right, sure. What is wouldn't. You, I know what that is. I'm trouble. You're, you're the former uh, editor. Could you re tell everyone what the AP style format is? It's just a way of writing certain words, yeah. and abbreviations, and mm -hmm. setting things up with your date lines and your bylines and your and your whatnots. Do you have the handbook? Uh, I had the handbook so many years. I don't even refer to the handbook. I got to a point. I got to a point in the in the once you're a, a writer, a sports writer for about five years you realize the AP handbook doesn't fucking matter and you just start doing your own way. So that's 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 my take about that. Okay. Anywho, uh, how long were you a writer? Uh, for the four years I was in college, but that was it. I always like being on the mic. You think that's your calling? 
What? Being on the mic? Maybe. I don't know. Trying to figure it out. You know, I'm young. 24. I got some time. <laughs> here, uh, boy, here are my notes from the championship game. Um, Zach Eady, I think, and uh, this is a crazy – Maybe UConn is UConn, or whatever. They just won second championship. They're the best. They're the best program in college basketball. One of the best programs in college sports right now. Mm-hmm. I think this tournament was good for Zach Eady, though. Yeah, like, I feel like he was like the whole country was tired of him and thinking like he was overrated. He only gets the calls. He only does this. He only and then he showed out in the tournament. He showed out yeah. last night. He was fantastic. He they, they certainly didn't lose the game because of him. I think overall, this tournament. Was a was a you know I know he played this is crazy to say for somebody who won two time player of the year, but there were a lot of people that were like this eh, this is a, he's just tall he's just this he's just that no the motherfucker can play yeah and the forty point game against Tennessee I think we've kind of I don't want to say we forgot thirty seven last night exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you know he he's been sensational and one more thing about UConn's program okay Duke had a big run with Coach K right they won what five titles. But they won that with one guy. UConn, since 99, they won their first title in 99. They've now won six. They've won with three different coaches. They've won with stars. They've won with not stars. They just, they've, what was the stat you put on the sheet? They've missed 32% of the tournaments since uh, since breaking through in 99, but they've won 24% of the tournaments. Mm-hmm. That seems stupid. <laughs> Where do we stand on Hurley today? Because I, I, I do think... Would you rather have... I think I've asked this kind of on the show, but we're really going to do it now because Evo wrote it on the sheet. Mm-hmm. Bobby Hurley played college basketball, was a star, won two straight national championships at Duke. Mm-hmm. Was was incredible. Outside of Christian Leitner was the star of that team and really was right there with it. Um, he then became a coach, is making whatever coaches make. Uh, but hasn't really. He's just. He's just a coach. He's yeah. just a guy. That's all he is. He had a little bit of an NBA career too in there. He had a little bit of an NBA career, but he was just. He was just. He's just a guy as a coach. He exists as a coach, but that's it. Danny Hurley played college basketball at Seton Hall, but he was just a guy, and he 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 wasn't a two time uh, national champion. He wasn't a star. He wasn't this, and he didn't have an NBA career at all. But now. As a coach, he's won two titles, and he's the guy. Whose career would you rather have? I still maintain I'd rather be the star player and the average coach as opposed to the average player and star coach. I take devil's advocate, and I, I say absolutely Danny Hurley. You say you'd rather be the star coach. Because I think it would be tough to come down from being a star player, national championships, going to the league, and then kind of now having this – right. Not mid, but still compared to his yeah, brother. He got to go through college as the fucking swinging dick guy. He got he got to he got to be a star in college, especially when that probably mattered more than it matters now. I think there's more sustainable respect from from strangers and stuff, though. When you almost sustain sustain success at a uh, say it again. Sustain success there you go. when you're older. I think I think a lot of people like to be like, oh, you peaked in yeah. college and kind of dismiss it, whereas people are, have more respect for what Dan Hurley's doing because he's doing it. The thing about peaking in college, old. if it's a high peak, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of legacy, it's very clear in all of college sports that coaches have the better legacies than players an athlete you almost never want to peak in college yes hold on hold on hold on hold on do you think uh high level coaches just have inherently better legacies than high level players in college sports now obviously a high level coach can be at a school for 40 years a high level player is only going to be there for four years maybe yeah. five so that factors into it all right okay all right time out pause pause let me just yeah, I guess it, it has to be a coach because there is no Duke player with a better legacy than Mike Krzyzewski. Mm-hmm. Like, what is Johnny Manziel's legacy going to be? Would you rather be him or, like, there's, I don't know, not necessarily Scott Frost, but someone who's going to go on and win a bunch of games as a coach? Scott Frost was a great college player. How about Josh Heupel? 
yeah, like Josh Heupel, great college quarterback, but, but he yeah. could end up being one of the winningest coaches in SEC history. Mm-hmm. We don't know for sure, but I think I'd want that Johnny Heisman year. I think I, I think I'd want that. You're a Heisman winner. You're you know, he sat on top of the sports world as a college football player. That is very, very, very rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's, it's a, a good debate. It's a worthy debate. Yes, I like it, but I still side worthy debate. Not a bad name for a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you have to do with by adding wor- Werther I've, in your mouth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Werther's. Is that what they are? Werther's? Werther's original. Werther's. Now, that's a candy that every time I have one, I'm like, oh, man, I love this candy. And then I just go years without having a, can- a Werther's original. I don't know if I've ever had it. You never had a Werther's original? I'm going to look it up. One second. W- what are you What are you going to look up? I'm just going to look up what it looks like. I don't know if I've look, ever You're going to look up if you've had a certain candy? Pull yeah. the Werther's original. You're going to go Con- connorscandyhistory.com? I've never had one of these before in my life. I, just, I know what they are, but I've never had one. I just want Lucas to make a play. Lucas hasn't hasn't made a play yet. Lucas, yeah. I'm trying to get him involved in the offense a little bit here. Lucas, well, here's the ball. There we go, Lucas. Uh, never had one of those, huh? No, never. But I've seen them. Lucas, by the way, filling in for TJ. TJ and Mark are flying back from Arizona today, so we have the Jerry after dark. Is Mark flying back? Is he? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Is yeah, he gonna he, be? He's not gonna be here this week. Right? He's on the big dogs plane back, I believe. Oh, there's. But then a, I think he's flying. Yeah, he's, I don't think he's doing. Yeah, yeah he's the rest he's of stuff yeah. this week. He's going to take a well needed yeah. vacation. Yeah, we got we got to get a. Although he he did mention this a couple weeks back, but I, I think as a whole, not specific to this incident, we need better communication amongst the family. I, I like dicing it up with you guys, and I like to know what you guys are up to. So, I feel like for the future, we could definitely. It, you just want to be involved with Brandon. You're, you're getting, you just want to be family. You're getting a little yeah. too. No 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 no, 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 no. You, you got in the game here. We put you in the game, and you're taking way too many shots. <laughs> I just, I want to know what my boys are up to. We do we. Our group chat is active every night until I go to bed at like eight thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. And if you're asking me what my favorite play from the second half was last night, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's the one. Was that put back dunk in the second half? Yes, it was. There you go. That was. That was insane. Uh, Lucas, <laughs> Lucas. Lucas. We don't Lucas have to bring that way. picture up, oh, Lucas. My fault, my fault. Finger slipped? Yeah. Sorry, I was looking for something else. <laughs> it was saved on here. By the way, before we get back to the. the Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Lucas, this isn't Jerry after dark. Your job isn't to. It felt relevant. To make to the, the host's life miserable. It felt relevant to, to what to what we were talking about what family <laughs> right is that the that's the calling card yeah is that the phrase you guys use <laughs> on that topic before we get back to the put back dump dunk well can't talk today put back dump would be disgusting <laughs> yeah it would be uh shit yourself on the court <laughs> 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 well what were we talking the last time we were talking about the dunk contest. We were talking about if somebody just jizzed while they were going up for a dunk. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I laughed like that. <laughs> that was stupid. Like a little schoolgirl. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Caitlin bit, if somebody wants to put out a graphic, it's dead. Oh, yeah. Totally dead. What does that even mean? It's RIP. This whole thing where it's like I'm taking Caitlin to Olivia Rodrigo or we're hanging out for Easter. Obviously, she's still a friend. I will still hang out well, with what, her. What killed it? Uh, Nikki Smokes. Yeah, Nikki Smokes. Nikki Smokes on Friday is talking about, oh, Brandon, you're not going to believe who I'm dating, and then Caitlyn's getting into it, and uh, no, it's dead. The, the, the bit's done. I'm not going to have dueling bits at this company. Time out. Oh, yeah. The official time Time out, time out, time out. Yeah, yeah, time hold out. on. I'm her brother. Yes. And you're making the executive decision to end the bit because you don't want to be bit competitive with Nikki Smokes? It, it's tampering with the overall arc, and I don't like it. Are you breaking up with? Are you breaking up with, <laughs> with Caitlin? <laughs> Live on air? Yeah, honestly, this is the worst way I've ever broken up with somebody, and I, I hate to do that, but but it's it's a bit. Yes, I know, but the bit's dead. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not competing with Nikki Smokes. All right. Write that down. But yeah, the putback dunk last night was unbelievable and totally shame that got wasted. Lost in the fold. That was one of the craziest putback dunks I've ever seen, and it felt like. It didn't matter because they were down like twelve. Yeah, it was. But he caught it like behind him. Yeah, yeah. Cocked it back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, where do we stand on UConn? By the way, best team ever or no? 
No, not the best team. Why, why, why does every team that wins the championship have to be the best team ever? What's what's best team ever about this team? The fact that they've just handled everybody in their. But path. there's nobody else. Uh, so it, I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on everybody. But there's. It's not like um, 92 Duke who had to beat the Fab Five. It's not like 90 Duke who had to beat UNLV who was undefeated previously. It's not like there. What there isn't another big dog out there to conquer and to stake your claim as the best team ever this team lost what three times three times in the regular season which is and there's no shame in losing three times um but i'm not sure that the tournaments that they have run through it's it doesn't make it any less impressive it doesn't make i don't think those tournaments are all time makers i don't think those are tournaments that you look back and say, oh my god they survived that they dominated that tournament holy shit they are one of the all-time greats. They're a national champion. That's that's how we determine all-time greats. If you if you win a national championship, your name goes on a list of champions. But I don't I don't think they're the greatest team of all time. I'm so glad. Ninety six Kentucky to me is the greatest team well, of all time. I'm glad you brought up the path to get there because so far the, the the pushback I've seen from people saying UConn this UConn team is not the best team ever is because they're like oh well look at the dudes that this team had or look at the NBA stars that this team had. And I think there's a difference between having the roster versus going out on the floor and just beating the fuck out of everybody you play. So I'm glad that you at least brought up the path because you're right. There, there have been more impressive roads to get to where this team wound up getting. I mean, they're, su- they're a super team, and they're fantastic. And, yeah. But, but for example, what makes this UConn team better than last year's UConn team? They, so Ken I'm Palm, asking. Ken Palm has them as about a seven-point favorite over last year's team. Wow, year really? Before. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Because that team killed everybody, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, w- I would say there's a strong argument for them as one of the five greatest teams ever just because of they are a legitimate buzzsaw. Like, we've never seen yeah. a team. Yeah. We probably have seen teams, but buzzsaw a tournament in that fashion. Like, it never felt like anyone else had a fucking chance against UConn, you know? There was a there the margin of victory in the tournament there. I don't – I think there were – I think they Plus were Plus 140? One? Yeah, number yeah. one ever. But there were, I mean, there are other teams like right there with them that would have that argument as well. It's the greatest tournament performance by a team, I think, ever. It's the most, it's the biggest difference between, and this year and last year, the biggest difference between the quality of the champion and and the field. I mean, they just yeah. dominate, they've dominated the field. I, I brought up a couple weeks ago, I asked Titus, I was like, what's, I think this was around the Sweet 16, and by this point, UConn had already been bullying teams, but I said, what's the main reason why you wouldn't pick UConn to win it all, aside from, well, it's just hard to go back to back because that was the only reason why I didn't pick them. I was like, ah, they're not going to go back to back. That's hard to do. Read this out. Um, got you. Uh, we're going to talk about wall. Let's talk about wall, Brandon. Cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals and has been in the business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. The color Pro Cordless cordless Clipper, pardon me, Ebo's holding it up right now, is your styling MVP with an array of easy-to-see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless, which allows you to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging because looking sharp should be a slam dunk by the wall. Cordless Color Pro today. Struggling. Speaking of Caitlin Clark. Yeah, go ahead. Because I'm sure uh, the boys out in Arizona yesterday probably weighed in on Caitlin Clark and them losing to South Carolina and everything. My only take about this, and I, I know I haven't been here since whenever I was here. But anyway, here's my take. Caitlin Clark. Does she Caitlin? That's a great That's a great point. Does she yeah. Caitlin Clark? Anyway, so <laughs> here, Caitlin Clark, more people watched. Older players, your Brianna Stewart's, your Diana Taurasi's, your Lynette Woodard, who came out and said, uh, she didn't break my record, and then said, oh, yes, she did. I was just kidding. Um, all these older players need to shut the fuck up when it comes to Caitlin Clark. Whether it's the UConn players who are bragging about their championships when they just signed with a team that had every star in the country, th- those were glorified practices. Those teams going up against the rest of the country, if it's them, if it's the 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 woman she broke the record who's saying she didn't break my record, they all need to shut the fuck up. What this young lady has done has brought more eyeballs and notoriety. 
to the women's version of basketball than any of those motherfuckers combined. Mm -hmm. Any of them. They've all, they all played college basketball. They all had their moment. They won championships. None of them moved the needle like Caitlin Clark. And now, entering the WNBA, you've got WNBA players lining up to say, oh, well, you know, she's, she's, she can do that in college. She ain't going to do that up here. We're grown women. Guess what? When she does get up there, people are actually going to fucking watch now because she's there, and maybe you should welcome her with open arms. There. That's what I say about Caitlin Clark. I do love it, though, because it is a definitive shift in how we talk about women's basketball, where women's basketball is today. Yeah. I mean, with the NBA, there's always the old heads. There's always the Paul Pierce's of the world talking that about That always things. exists in every sport, and that's fine. This, this is another thing entirely. But – I mean, this is almost universal. Anybody, any play, any women's basketball player older than Caitlin Clark has took time out of their day to shit on Caitlin Clark. It's weird. It is weird. But for the first, maybe this has been going on forever, and we just have never seen it. But now we're finally seeing it because it is so much in the limelight, and Caitlin Clark is such a big story. It'll be interesting to see what what the ratings are for women's basketball next year because yeah. probably not very good. I yeah, I know Juju's still there, but. You know, Angel Reese is gone. She was a good villain for a lot of we, people. We are starting to leak back into early 2010s UConn territory with South yeah. Carolina where yeah, you're right. they just look so much yeah. more physical and athletic than every other team. Well, Caitlin Clark played. was the best player on the floor the other day, and South Carolina had the next 10. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't even close. South Carolina returns for the most part everybody except for Cardoso. But they're another team. They didn't bring back hardly anything. No. This year. But now they're going to be back. Yeah. Next year. They didn't bring back hardly anything and they and they just they just yeah. cruised. And then Nebo, you brought up UConn. UConn with Paige Beckers. She's still gonna be here, right? She's gonna have another year. They get uh they get FUD FUD back. Yeah. So FUD was out with an injury. Yeah, so she she's just she she's had a tough career, right? She just has never been able to stay on the Well court. they that UConn team over the last couple of years has just been getting hit by an injury bug. It was yeah. non stop. Paige last year. Yeah. And, and this year, you can make the argument that Paige was on a similar trajectory to Caitlin Clark. I mean, Caitlin Clark is all around the better player, but Paige was set to be like one of the next stars in women's college basketball. Now she's maybe going to have not the league, the entire college basketball world to herself. Yes, there are going to be teams that are better, but who knows? Yeah. I might be crazy. I thought the girl on South Carolina, number 13 or 12, who was coming off the bench was the best player I saw on the floor. The blonde she hair? Was, the, the blonde hair? No. Oh. no I, I know who you're talking she about. She was moving so fast. Oh, the freshman. Yeah, her handles were insane, yeah. and she was, like, going up for layups. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to glaze. It was, like, like female Kyrie glaze. Irving. It was it was insane. I was like, that might be the best women's basketball player. I, I'm going to go on record and say everybody is free to glaze today if okay. you want. Can I just, That's the one rule. Can I, can I just – isn't – I thought glazing was just if you were talking about dudes. What is glazing? You're – uh, Lucas, you want to chime in here? Got it. Um, I don't. Also, I don't think you can glaze a woman. I don't think that's possible. I certainly never have. <laughs> oh, Brandy, that should. What? Uh, hold on. It was a uh, full Wiley. Yeah, she was glazed. <laughs> when you were meat, <laughs> when you were meat riding someone or sucking up to them. Yeah, up. Wait, is that trying? Is that trying to say in more layman's terms? Yeah, that's exactly what it's trying to say in more laments terms. <laughs> Glazing is when you gas up and excessively compliment someone to the point where it's just cringe and annoying. Was yeah. this written by a bot? <laughs> that, this, how do you include meat writing in the definition for glaze? Because then this person would have to look up meat writing. Yeah. Which I guess meat writing is a little bit more self-explanatory than, than glazing. Well, no, so. no. You could be you could be on a pig. <laughs> You could just be so so. Rodeo cowboys are just meat riders. Yeah, yeah I mean, right? No if, one's if, meat riding harder than they're, they're trying to stay on the meat. That's what they're they're clinging to meat. Yeah, they they can't they do not want to get off of meat. I saw a video. Who's number one meat rider in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a video of a a cop earlier who had to chase down a rogue pig. It was awesome. He did wind up catching it. So I guess you could say that was meat riding. But I'm not sure. That's not. He's not on the pig. He's meat. No, cha he's meat chasing. Dude, if you saw, he was on top of this. You saw pig. the video. Yes, I'll try and find it. Yeah, you're. 
but you're not. You're not moving. Yeah, I didn't know if we were still wanted to go deeper into the meat riding. If you have a video on. of a cop chasing a pig, I saw that. He wasn't meat riding. It was in a driveway, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the pig didn't really try to get away that hard. It was very impressive, nonetheless. I don't think it was. I, I you, Brandon, you cannot track down a pig. I like could. That. This guy was fatter than me. <sighs> was he, though? I'll look it up. I'll look it up. You know someone who's going to be riding off some meat? John Calipari. Oh. Tyson Food. <laughs> that was a crazy that video. That motherfucker walking his dog. It was a crazy video. Knowing that every idiot in Kentucky is obsessed with what he's doing at that moment. And not only walking, the, he's pushing the stroller and walking the dog behind him. I... I a, I'll never get strollers for dogs. I'll just go ahead and say that out loud I, right now. I, I don't get it. The, if you have a leash, make the dog walk. Bring it up with Miss Peaches. She'll. Uh, does she have a stroller? Yeah, she does. She has a stroller. She's a big girl for a stroller. Well, but yeah. I just don't get it. I'm not saying I, I just I don't get it. Like, you got a leash. Yeah. Tell, tell it to Miss well, Peaches. Well, that little is she coming? She's on the way. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Calipari's dog was like tiny, eeny beeny. Yeah. yeah. Eeny, be eeny beeny, teeny weeny. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo love. You know that song? This has real been, been a real ADHD show. Yeah. That's my specialty, so I'm, I'm good. That's I prefer that. And speaking Connor's of, chucking. Speaking yeah. of. Forrest Gump? My favorite movie in the world. I thought we talked about this on the show. I didn't think it was going to take you by that surprise. Okay. Well, I just don't really pay attention to you. Okay. Uh, so I'm in, I'm in Philly. <laughs> and chilling and tommy walker texts me and says hey dad when you get home can we watch forrest gump together i said of course you know i always watch a movie with my boy uh and then um we didn't because I, I i got home late last night and we had to work in the yard but uh we'll watch it tonight and you texted me and you said what first i said i can't wait to talk wrestling with you and then i said also if tommy needs someone to watch forrest gump with him yeah i'm there even though it is documented Tommy texted his father and said, hey, Dad, will you watch Forrest Gump with me? And I clearly intended to. You decided to speak up and say, if Tommy needs somebody to watch, you decided to try to cuck me out of my own father. No, 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 no. I know you're a busy guy. I know you're just coming off a long trip, and I figured. So what you're saying is, if I said, Connor, I need, Tommy is going to watch Forrest Gump. I need somebody to watch with him. Drive to my house, Uber to my house, come an hour out of your way and come watch this. That's what you thought I was going to do? I would have done it for Tommy, and I would have done it for you, Brandon. Let's because I, some, I love Forrest Gump. Let's talk some Forrest Gump theories. All right. Do you share the opinion of some loud people online that Jenny was just a horrible person? Not at all. Yeah, Jenny was a good person who went through some horrible things in her life yeah. and didn't know how to respond to it. That's yeah. what Jenny, that, that, that's the Jenny story. Also, she did give Forrest a lot of happiness. A lot of happiness. Yeah. And fucked him multiple times. That's also true. <laughs> Possibly gave him AIDS, but we but we don't see the AIDS. The uh we don't see the uh the scene where he goes to the all girls college. Right. And just gets jacked off with the yeah. roommate right there. Well, yep. I guess that I think she just like makes contact and he just busts. Yeah, he he nuts on the roommate's robe. It's a contact bust, yeah. Uh that was just an insane scene. But I imagine in that moment, Forrest was like, "Oh my God, this is the best mm -hmm. feeling I've ever had." I don't think, yeah, I don't think he knew what he was feeling. Yeah, I remember my first bust. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. That was for you, Lucas. Lucas gave a little bit of a laugh. Uh, now, um, <laughs> it is, when it comes to Forrest Gump, the football player, yeah, you think he was underutilized in Alabama, or do you think they got everything out of him because he was a straight line runner? And he was able to uh, maneuver in the open field enough to score touchdowns on the kickoff return, but we couldn't have had some packages for him? No, I don't think so. Because the way that they approach the kickoffs, he's not even receiving the ball. Right. He doesn't even catch it. He's just there to run. So I feel like – Yeah, but they hand the ball off to him. Correct. By literally placing it right in his chest. That's what a saying, handoff Forrest, is. Forrest, 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 Forrest. That's what a handoff No, is. he couldn't be a running back. He couldn't be a wide receiver. He couldn't be running those sweeps. Why not? Because he'd if have to he, memorize the play. If they can hand him the ball on a kickoff and say, here, dummy, go, they can do that on a straight handoff. No, Brandon. This is where your lack of movie knowledge and just your lack of ball knowledge really shows. You can't put a guy with that type of 
I don't, I don't even know what you would call it. Like, clearly, he has some type of yes, slowness. Yes, you can. His IQ, yes, as we you saw, was lower. If you can lower. put him back there on kickoff. You're not going to teach somebody, him a playbook. And somebody else catches the ball and, and gives it to him. You can stick him back at the head of the I formation and just say, run behind that guy. You're not going to teach him a playbook. Also, you don't need to teach him a playbook, Connor. Also, there, put, there's no plays back then. It just runs. It's, it's three plays. He can't go through the line like that. He can't go between the tackles. He's Why best do you in think open that? space. This motherfucker in Vietnam ran through bombs and everything and went and got Bubba. He can't run through the line. He can't run through Auburn's defense. He had braces on his legs for no, years. He, didn't. he was never. He was a kick returner. He was never playing football. He never he had to be in the return. trenches. They put him in kick return. When he was a little boy, Brandon. He did not have to deal with the rigor of going between the tackles in youth football. He was wearing braces Kick-offs his entire childhood. Kickoffs the most dangerous play in football. But he had the open space to navigate around people. He wasn't getting tackled. If he's going between the tackles or if he's taking a handoff, he's getting brutally just murdered by anybody who's in his path. I think you're wrong. I think you're full of shit, and I think what you're saying is stupid. And I will defend to the death your right to say it. Are you struggling with the shoes? Yeah, I'm struggling with the shoes right now a lot. They're getting knocked around. Uh, yeah, I, I totally disagree with you. You know what I think that is? What? I think that's a, a jabroni take. I didn't like that at all. He's trying to do rock mode again. You said you were done with rock I mode. I didn't like that. Listen, do you smell? No, I'm. we'll get to wrestling in a minute. Just relax on the wrestling. Do you we're, smell? We're, the, we're still on. For, Griff is good. <laughs> we're still on Forrest Gump right now. Okay. Can I ask a question? Uh, throw a de- healthy little debate out there. Don't I, say we don't. We don't, don't sorry, sorry. Well, he added sorry, the little in there. We do worthy debate. Yeah. Um, what's more impressive, Forrest Gump's football ability, or like if some like Air Bud, or like if an animal was playing a sport, like a dog playing like football, or like a horse playing baseball, or something like that. Just like random. Well, first of all, I think I speak for everybody on the show. <laughs> I don't think a horse can play baseball. I mean, there's no, there's no real way a horse is going to be able to play baseball. How is he going to hold the bat? He doesn't have arms, so that's kind of stupid. That's what I mean. Is Forrest Gump more interesting than? I I'm going to say it, a horse playing baseball is probably the most impressive thing I can imagine. Lucas, surely you do not have any video evidence of a horse playing baseball i've never seen a horse play baseball in my life so yeah i don't think i'd be able to pull anything out all right you've never seen a horse are you baseball? being are you, are you being fucking serious right now yes <laughs> like air bud makes a little bit of sense because what did you just smaller. did you just pull a horse playing baseball out of thin air yes you've never seen air bud i was thinking of like four four legged animals <laughs> like air bud is so iconic Ooh. like he played all those sports but he's small or she. But you didn't just bring up a horse playing baseball. You just brought that up. Yeah. <laughs> Do and you run? don't currently have a clip loaded up of a horse playing baseball. No. I mean, I could look up. Do you, playing baseball. Yeah, do that. Do a Google search. Is, is this motherfucker? Should we rock his world? Is this motherfucker for real? <laughs> if you find a horse playing baseball, we'd like to watch it. Okay, I'll, I'll look. I'll look. Yeah. Uh, the show's not moving until you do that. <laughs> so That's a great point, Brandon, because he doesn't have arms. How would he swing the bat? And horses, they can they can go up on two legs, but not... Also, it seems like it would be dangerous for like fielders, like a catcher, if, if the if the horse was running into home plate. like what, what would you do? Would you just have to run and jump and get out of the way? All right, all right I found it. What'd you find? Horses can't throw <laughs> like that or wear a glove. There you have it. <laughs> who wrote this article? I want to know who wrote this uh, article. <laughs> who wrote that? Lucas. I mean, I don't really get – like, I'm trying to look at the chat to see, like, what they're talking about. But, again, they're not really – they're not really helping out. You know what they say. A lot, a lot of people online like to say that uh, – they like to point out that you can't spell Lucas without L. I'm going to point out that you can't spell Lucas without W. I like that. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? This show's been hijacked. That's been hijacked. Lucas. What's up? Play me a clip of a horse playing baseball. Do it right now. Like, I'm going to... Do it immediately. Like, I'm not... I'm just not seeing anything here. Want to see a horse play baseball? Horses don't play that, baseball. That's literally us! 
MLB Slugfest. Stick around for horse baseball. He just wait. Passed. Are we the top result? For he just passed a clip with us. Baseball? <laughs> yeah, there's no there's. I'm looking at all these thumbnails. None show horses. Mm. That's tough. Even like attempting to hold a bat. Like, see, like this picture's insane. Also, uh, uh, can I just point out that's hockey? Yeah, that's not even baseball. Maybe they <laughs> can play hockey. Lu- Lucas is also wearing a jersey today. His motherfucker walked in this morning and said, "It's Jersey, right?" <laughs> Uh, well, Jersey Day was like a social social construct. Yeah, like it's like a. It is. It's an idea. It's not necessarily. Search a day. Mr. Ed plays baseball. How about that? Let's just try that. He's a horse. Let me try that. Why, why do you know a horse's name off the top of your head? <laughs> He's taking this a little too far. <laughs> well, horses, of course, of course, of course, horse, of course, of course. I, I, I'm I'm just stunned right, just looking breath. at him. Yeah, no wonder Jerry's just going crazy. Jerry after dark tonight. Anybody wants to watch? Lucas is on double trouble. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Oh, say, oh, he's holding the bat with his with his teeth. Yeah, that's Sandy that, Koufax. Yeah, that's one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Oh, this is the Dodgers though. <laughs> oh, he's gonna blow it right past him. Whoa. <laughs> Are we allowed to curse in this show? Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it either, man. They clearly sped the video up right there. I just realized that. All right. No, he's an idiot. He didn't even touch second base. Wait, 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 wait. What's he going to do? How's he going to... Oh, he's out of the line. <laughs> now, do you, feel, do you feel a little silly? I mean... Do you feel a little silly? That's got to be CGI. <laughs> it's not real. So. Oh. CGI didn't oh. exist back then when Sandy Koufax was around. C's didn't Actually, exist. I'm pretty sure the whole thing is probably just CGI at this point. That was a good line, Brandon. Yeah, right. Thanks. C's didn't exist. Computers. Back to Forrest Gump. Okay. What's your uh, What's your favorite part of the movie? There's many parts of the movie. Oh, my favorite part is when... Jenny is not on her deathbed. Well, I guess technically on her deathbed, yeah. When she goes, oh, I wish I could have been there with you. And Forrest goes, you were. It's so good. And he's going, he's reliving all the memories of him on his runs. Let's do a, and, a little quick Forrest Gump impression. I wouldn't say it was an impression, but it was, yeah. I, I Maybe I gave a little bit of the dialect. Uh, I want you to read. I'm not doing this. Yep. Yeah, you are. This is where you get into trouble. Yeah, you PFT are. PFT does an amazing one. Um. Uh, but, no, this is a line from the movie. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm, this is a line from the movie, and I just want you to read it as Forrest Gump. Is it, okay. Life is a box of chocolates. No, okay. but I just want. Uh, okay. I love this movie, but yeah, that's my favorite scene. Gets me every time. There you go. Thank just, you. Just read that as Forrest Gump. That's a line from the movie. You oh, agree? this is another great scene. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. And then he storms out. Ah, oh, boy. Um, where is that right? Where are your well, like? Hold on, hold on. Okay, sorry, go ahead. You know what? You go know, ahead. you know what my favorite part of that movie is. What the is very, it? It's the very beginning. Um, where Forrest is trying to get into school and he's not smart enough, and then um, Forrest's mom. Forrest's mom does what needs to be done, and uh, the principal actually visits the Gumps at home, and well, he has sex with Forrest's mom. I always thought that was the best part of that movie. Why do you like that part? Just what were you gonna say, Evo? <laughs> uh, Tom Hanks' uh, '90s run on movies. Uh, it's your, incredible. Is, is it's Forrest a- Gump one? Wow. Okay. So Philadelphia is is it okay? So obviously, depends on where you start. So A League of Their Own is in '92. Do you do you include Toy Story being animated? Because yeah. Toy Story is part of the run, and it's, it's incredible. And it goes all the way to Castaway, right? So you got you got League of Their Own, you got Sleepless in Seattle, you have Forrest Gump, Saving Private Philadelphia. Uh, I'm going in order here. Okay. I don't know what was in '95 or '96. 
Um, oh, he's got it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so sleeps in Seattle, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump. Oh, Apollo 13 and Toy Story, same year. That Thing You Do, which is one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Saving Private Ryan, You've Got Mail, um, Toy Story 2, The Green Mile, Castaway. That is that is as good as any any actor in the history of cinema. Yeah, I would have to agree. He is he the goat? Have we ever done like a a goat? We never okay. talked. Okay. We never talked. Have we ever about done anything. goat talk for him? Because it's always Go- De Niro goat? or Ca- DiCaprio. I, I I I have seen and enjoyed more Tom Hanks movies than I have De Niro movies. I've seen and enjoyed more Tom Hanks movies than. Uh, DiCaprio is probably close. He's done this for four decades. Of, like, even if you go back to the list, like the movies that have come out recently are still good, right? Like, if you go down, he's had some. When did he Polar start? Express might. Polar Express. When did he might. start falling? Uh, did he ever fall off? I the, guess. Yeah, a little bit. He also, did. the Toy Toy Story is kind of a cheat code in there. Yeah. I mean, Captain Phillips. He would. He did he win or was he nominated for that? I don't know if he was nominated. Sully. I mean. If we want to talk recent, people fucking hated him in the Elvis in movie. Elvis. He was awful in Elvis, but that's okay. I didn't mind him. He went four decades of, oh, yeah. Oh, no, what were you going to say? What, you keep pointing at me. Well, I, I thought you were done with your point. What I was going to point pointing at me. What? what? I, we were talking about great runs. If you ever want to look at a great run, it goes beyond cinema because it was also on TV. Matthew McConaughey, 2013-2014. Look at the 2013-2014. He had True Detective, he had Dallas Buyers Club, he had Interstellar, and he also was in Wolf of Wall Street, one of the best parts of that movie. That doesn't compare with Tom Hanks going eight years of of, of huge movies. Now, you could throw Cruz in there. Cruz has had runs like this. Yeah, the duration of it obviously matters, and I'm not saying Matthew McConaughey is like the goat for this, but those two years. I would say uh, in those two years of McConaughey, I'd say 50 actors have done runs like that. I don't know. Who is this? True Detective, this is McConaughey. True Detective, one of the best TV shows ever. Mm-hmm. Dallas Buyers Club won a shit ton of awards. That was his first Oscar. Yeah, sure. Wolf of Wall Street, he was arguably the best part of that movie. Uh-huh. And he's in it for five minutes. But the best part of the movie. Okay. And then Interstellar is an all-timer from Christopher Nolan. Just be on the lookout. Uh, Brand, be on the lookout for what? You, you, you probably wouldn't understand Interstellar. I take it back. I also don't understand if it makes you feel better. That's fine, Lucas. You're right. Lucas, what pants are you wearing today? Um, my black pants. They're really comfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're a little. They're not uh, snug. They're, they're. They are. They're like a little tight around. Uh, like. Everywhere. Who are you calling, Brand? They might be on the plane already. You call Mark. Yeah. I was just gonna see if I could go ahead and hit you. Okay. Oh no. Hey, can I can I go ahead and hit him now? Are we killing Connor? Yeah, can I go ahead and do it? Give me a Ric Flair chop. Oh, fuck. Uh yeah. Are you Yeah, I are, guess so. Are you naked? Yeah, I just got out of the shower. <laughs> you wanna see my dick? No. No. Alright. How's, well, sh- how's the show going today? I haven't been watching. I turned it on for two seconds. Yeah. Connor it- was Connor just reading off his notes from last night. Connor's having a pretty good show. Ebo's doing fine. I'm doing okay. Lucas is fucking garbage. Lucas, Lucas is producing. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> the last question before I called you was Connor Griffin asking Lucas what pants he has on, and Lucas said, my black pants. <laughs> and that's that's the highlight of Lucas's show. Jesus. All right. Jesus. Huh. All right. I'll see you. Yeah. I thought you weren't going to be back tomorrow. He says he's back tomorrow. Give me. Uh, I'm confused. I thought he was. Are you calling him back? Yeah. After you just. Yeah. I thought you weren't going to be back tomorrow. I'm back tomorrow. I thought you were going on vacation. I'm going on vacation Thursday. Uh, oh, you're back tomorrow. I'll be back for one day, then I'm on vacation. Okay. Well, that that's good. Now, 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 now you can go. All right. Thanks. Right, Blutman, you have large in privileges. The start at ten o'clock. I, it's exactly ten o'clock. You you brought you in right on the dot. He you, had to be. You, just you needed out help there. today, so I'm here to help, and I just wanted to watch. He, he was definitely waiting outside that door yeah. for the last thirty minutes. No, he's been getting way too antsy. Like five tapping around. Five ish. Yeah. I was just like, I wanted to watch this. I you needed help. Give me a thank you. Give me a Ric Flair chop. Why? You said you were gonna hit me, and I I feel. Do you want a Ric Flair chop? Yeah, it's very fun. I I like being a wrestler. Yeah. Oh, we're doing it. 
I gotta do it with my right hand. I can't do it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Let me give him a Vince McMahon kiss while you're at it. How hard do you want? Hard. Hard? Hard. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it too hard. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Stand up, stand up. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh shit. There we go. <laughs> that one got me. That one got me. All right, we're good now. I thought you were gonna do the woo. Nah, I'm not a I'm not a Ric Flair guy. Okay. I'm not a woo guy. You're a Hulk Hogan guy. Um, I'm a rock guy. Uh, did you look at your chest? Yeah, How's I can't. Doing? I can't tell if there's a mark or not. You have a shockingly hairy chest for a, for a guy of, of fair skin and fair features. Well, I think part of the problem is that my arm hair is just, I mean, flat out blonde. It's almost like what you can barely see it. If it was black, you'd see it. I say that about my dick. <laughs> Uh, Blutman, how you doing? Good. All right, that's Blutman. Doing uh, well. So, um, I went to WrestleMania. Let's talk about this, yeah. Uh, was that Liam? Was that Ebo? I think it was Lucas. I went to WrestleMania 40 over the weekend. And are you falling asleep? <laughs> Are you going to sleep? No, stop. Right. Let's stop. let the man talk about right. WrestleMania. Let, let, let the man, just give me 30 seconds to talk about wrestling. I went to WrestleMania 40. Uh, night one was decent. It had a couple good matches, a couple of good moments, but it was bitterly cold. Now, I was in the 2K Games, was able to bring us out there, and I was in a suite, so I wasn't too bad. We were in the front row of a suite, so we could always walk backwards if we wanted to get warmer. But night one was a little muted because it was so cold. Night two... About 15 degrees warmer, which was perfect, great conditions, and one of the greatest nights of wrestling in the history of WWE. And it culminated in Cody Rhodes finishing his story, vanquishing Roman Reigns, and doing so after a 10-minute segment of John Cena coming out, of Seth Rollins coming out of the Shield, as The Undertaker coming out. And it was the greatest 10 minutes of wrestling experience I've ever had in my life. It was phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. I, I watched the whole thing night two. I only watched the the main event of night one, yeah. Which I feel like that was pretty much all you needed to see. And yeah, well, there were the the women's match to open the show was good. Uh, oh, otherwise, there Ripley. wasn't much. Oh, one more thing. Um, night two opened with this this group called uh, War and the War and Treaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great. The War and Treaty. I had never heard of them. I have listened to nothing but the Warren Treaty oh, yeah. ever They're since. Incredible. Right up your alley. They are phenomenal. They're, I will. I don't know that I'll ever listen to another anything again. I'm just going to listen to them from here on out. On I a, love them so much. They're on a Zach Bryan song. They are. Dry, yeah. the dry, hey, hey driver. driver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it they, it's they're amazing. They did a great job. And then I, as soon as I got where I could, I Spotify them. I looked, and I, and that's all I listen to now. So if you're like me and you don't listen to music that came out after 2005, check out the Warren Treaty. You will like it. That was a good plug. I think everything night two from that, Stephanie getting on stage, mm -hmm. the first match was, was incredible. Amazing. Drew McIntyre, yep. And then CM Punk comes in, and immediately there was the cash in. Yep. And then CM Punk, didn't he fuck around with Drew McIntyre last night too? Yeah, he did. He did. Who Crazy. Cashed, who cashed in? Damian Priest. He's now the new world heavyweight champion. Mm -hmm. Part of the Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. Has a woman ever cashed in their money in the bank for a men's title? No, because they they they're women. Mm. They compete for the women's titles. Mm. But like, what wrestle if... too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lucas. I have a question. In 2024, what's stopping John Cena from calling out or whoever Cody Rhodes from trying to unify belts and calling out Rhea Ripley? What's stopping that? That's a good point. He could do it. You want to get Clay Travis to tweeting about the show now? <laughs> I uh, I wanted to ask you about The Rock. Okay, you may ask me. Because I'm in rock mode. Please. The run that he's been on for the past two months yeah. mm -hmm. in this road to WrestleMania. Right. And you saw it again last night where I think he gave his official goodbye and everything. Mm -hmm. He's just dropping F-bombs now. He he's, doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He's vicious. Yeah. He's, I mean, there's... Getting... It's the best he's ever been, and it shows how much better he is than everybody who's ever done this. He's drawing blood. He's coming out to a different entrance almost every single time where they're adding in all this cool shit and it's a major event whenever he is there yeah. even if he's there last night was probably the last time he's going to be there for a while right but what he's done in the past couple months 
leading WWE now into this new era, as Triple H said. He's amazing. Is this one of the most significant runs that anybody has had in recent years of wrestling? It's probably his best run of his career, and um, outside of Hollywood Rock in 2003. And then it's it's it, yeah, it it just shows how 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 missed he was when he went and had his acting career because mm. we could have had this for 20 years, but it's it's been incredible. It's been one of the best I've ever seen. I've been glued to the screen whenever he's there. So we did a video game thing um, to Thursday and Friday. We had to be on. We were on stage with WWE wrestlers. I was tag teaming with The Miz mm-hmm. against uh, whoever we. Wrestled. Is he Hall of Famer, by the way? Will yeah, he be for sure? Yeah, okay, yeah. for sure. Um, big Barstool fan. Talked to me about uh, Clemmer's stream. Talked to me about a bunch of stuff. Talked to me about Jerry after dark. Um, big Barstool fan, and I spilled a full bottle of water. He was wearing a suit all over him, all over him, all over him. Let me guess. It was because the water bottle was exactly how it is on your desk right now, as you always keep it with yeah. no cap. Let me guess. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. He told a joke. I, in my laughter, dropped the water bottle. Mm. I was holding a full water. had not been opened, and it exploded at his feet, went all over. And I have never seen a man brush off and not react to something the way he did that. And he just, he was the coolest motherfucker I've ever, he just, he just kept, he kept drinking, kept telling his story, didn't stop, covered in water. And I said, hey man, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize 50 times. He said, dude, you're trying to be funny. I get it. That's my Miz story. Did you meet anybody else cool? I met Jey Uso. Okay. Uh, I got within, Great interview. I got within 10 feet of the rock. Really? Yeah, but you, you weren't getting any closer. That was as close as I could get. Um... There was a, a little girl who just owned him on the stage that I saw. Yeah. It was either Thursday or Friday. Well, that was it was Thursday. Okay, yeah. Because we were supposed to go uh, – we were supposed to be on stage at 3.30, but we got pushed – the Rock was supposed to be at 2.30. We were going to be at 3.30, and he showed up three hours late. Nice. So we waited for three hours. Okay. And then went after him. Um, anyway. Blutman, Is that on purpose when he does that? No, I don't he think He shows so. up late, and then it's all part of like no, I think he was, build up? No, I think he was doing his political interview where he said he's not going to endorse Biden again. So. Mm. Uh, I'm all for that. Um, <laughs> Blutman, what? the floor is yours now. I'm just here to watch Connor. Did you watch WrestleMania at all? Were you into it? No. Oh, okay. Oh. You know who the biggest uh, wrestling fan in the world is? His dad. That's why I was asking. Yeah. I didn't know if maybe that was passed on from generation nope. to generation. Nope, not at all. No, he, his dad tried, but his... his Failed twice. Yeah, Loki in this one wouldn't wouldn't do it. Damn. Wouldn't do it. What you think of Philly? But did you get to go out at all? Did uh, I did. Out? Well, I, I here's another plug. Uh, Friday night, I went to uh, Helium Comedy Club where I saw Francis Ellis from Boston. Awesome. And I had never seen Francis perform stand-up. Mm-hmm. And I, being a cynic and someone who, y'all know me, I fucking hate Francis. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think he should just die. Uh, if you ever have a chance to go see Francis do stand up, you need to go because that motherfucker is hilarious. He is fantastic, and it was one of my favorite hours of the entire week. Awesome, remarkable performance. Helium also seems like a really cool club, from what I've heard. It probably is. Okay. Yeah, probably is. <laughs> but uh, I ate most meals at the Reading Market. Okay. Um, there's an oyster place in there. I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. That's uh the Sixer City uniforms this year are based on the Reading Terminal Market. That type of what do you think about the Phillies uh, uh, City Connect? Fucking hate it. What's it based on? The Philly City flag is that blue and yellow. It's like when the Eagles back in 2010, they had a throwback jersey. The Philly City flag is blue and yellow. Yes. The Phillies have uh, – Philadelphia has four major sports teams. Mm-hmm. The flag is blue and yellow. They have a red and blue baseball team. Yep. They have a green football team, a red, white, and blue basketball team, and a, an orange and black hockey team. Correct. And, yeah, listen, and, I don't and make at the rules. no point where is Philly going to step up and say, hey, maybe use our colors? Well, you also have to remember that Philadelphia, a little history lesson, Philadelphia was one of the uh, first major cities in the United States. I don't think that's right. I mean, Philadelphia back was where they were meeting for all, all these political meetings and everything going on in the Revolutionary to, War. First five cities to 100,000 in the U.S. This is a stone-cold fact. Uh, New York City. Miami, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, and Portland, Oregon. That's a fact. I'm wearing a shirt for Portland, Oregon today, actually. Uh, this is Bigfoot 
riding a unicorn with a UFO in the background, and on the bottom it just says Portland, Oregon. I've never been to Idaho, but I'd like to go. Idaho is one of those states. It's probably my number Idaho. Oh. Probably not my number one state I'd like to visit that I haven't visited yet. That's, Idaho. That was good, Evo. Why do you want to go to Idaho so bad? You want to go to the game that, like, you want to go to Boise? Or you well, there's not many people out there, first of all. That's a plus. Yeah. Uh, the sky is really big. Um, it's big sky. Big sky yeah. I'd like to go to a big sky. Uh, and it looks wonderful. It looks pleasant. Wait. It looks it, Everything about it looks amazing. What is your retirement plan? Do you have one? I don't have – I no. Here's the thing. And I was thinking the other day, for as much money as I make, and it's – oh, my God, it's so much. I will probably be able to retire when I'm 130. Turns out having four kids fucks you up. Yeah. My retirement plan is actually my plan for non-retirement. I want to move back to Mississippi as fast as I humanly can. Okay. My dream would be to leave tonight and never see you motherfuckers again. That's my retirement plan. How old are you? Like, But my dad was drug addled. <laughs> He was drug addled, and uh, he sold his home in a reverse mortgage, so now I'm having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that back. And he also left it in a state of disrepair, so, disrepair, so I, would have to, I would have to remodel it before I could even move back. So What type of drugs? Oh, you name it, buddy. <laughs> cocaine. He used to hide cocaine in my, uh, in my baseball cleats. Ketamine? Uh, don't know what that is. Um, the weed, of course, was he hid that in my Snoopy tackle box. Um all of it. Huh. Meth. He got into meth after. Meth was a – we didn't have meth in the 80s. We didn't have meth until like 2004. Mm. But once we had it, boy, he was – he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. Yeah, he would stay up all night painting. So, <laughs> Tommy Walker's your retirement plan. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I hope my kid becomes a pro athlete and pays for it. Tommy Walker's just going to be like – Late night television. Huh? I did get permission to go ahead and start Tommy Walker's uh, from Dave to start Tommy Walker's Twitch and his YouTube and all that. So we're going to start that this summer. So hopefully, wait, from Dave? Yeah, Dave well, got involved in this. No, I was like, I told him, I was like, I work at Barstool. Everything I do belongs to Barstool. I am going to start putting some effort into my son's career. Can I go do that and that not be considered part of Barstool? And he said, Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought this doesn't was that good. make sense. I thought this was going to be like a, a barstool sanctioned thing where we were no gonna, no no no, okay. no no. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the guy that's like yeah yeah. But your kids. Uh, what else? Blutman, give me a topic. Uh, golf this week. It's going to be a good one at the Masters. I have tickets. Really? Yeah, I have two tickets, and I don't think I'll be able to go. And so they're having the big uh, mini golf thing here this week. High Noon's a part of it, and uh, I get to be a part of it, so I'm excited about that. Yes. So I'll be here for that. Um, and, and uh, yeah, then then I won't be able to go because, you know, Saturday is a big day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Liam, who's the uh, – Is there going to be a horse playing golf? <laughs> That'd be that wild. Dude, a horse can't play. I mean, come on. I mean, we just watched one play baseball. It's like a – you might slice it a little bit. Lucas, but you have you have 45 seconds. Find me the funniest video you can find. You went to a practice it, round last year or that now I I tried the weather. It, it oh, okay. Liam, who's the favorite to win the Masters this week? Is there one? Scott Scheffler. Okay. Scotty. Of course. What about John Rahm? John Rahm I think is like plus 1000 ish. Scott Scheffler is like plus 400. The live guys have been playing municipal courses. They don't. They don't play. Uh, they don't play this shit. Yeah, but could they have been? Could they have gotten to Augusta? Uh, Augusta last week? Well, you, they had an event last week in Miami. Did they? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Cam Smith withdrew due to illness. Um, I I also don't want to like overstep on the tennis, golf, lacrosse, hockey. My master's tickets are already given away. So don't don't DM me. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking to the people DMing me right now. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. A lot of people DM me and tell me to tell you to unblock them uh, tell just, them to go fuck them yeah i get that a bunch too yeah, it's it's kind of a bit much there's a rule if you don't want to be unblocked by me if you don't want to be blocked by me don't be an asshole if you're an asshole you've been blocked sorry that's tough yeah tough, 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 tough out here mm -hmm. uh well uh, yeah i was just gonna say on the pga tour this weekend akshay batia what a performance did you guys write him down for the tennis golf 
uh, lacrosse hockey segment. I did not. Uh, it's you did not. Hockey, tennis, baseball, golf. It, uh, hockey, golf, baseball, tennis. We're not Sorry, doing so. lacrosse. Um, Akshay, yeah, we're getting away from that. It's too political. Gotcha. Akshay Batia dislocated his shoulder fist pumping after he made a birdie putt to force a playoff. Now, does that sound uh, Akshay Batia almost Star Wars character like? That's good. Is he a character from Star Wars? Sounds like one. I was going to say with uh, WrestleMania, with the main event, part of that main event was exactly like Star Wars The Last Jedi. Almost exactly. The whole Seth Rollins thing coming back and the the outfit that he was wearing the shield, like that was Star Wars The Last Jedi, the ending of it. I loved it. You guys like Star Wars? Love Star Wars, yeah. No. Murder Mystery coming soon. We have a couple of uh, leftover opening day gifts. Yes, we do. Uh, I I will open them now. I pre-opened this one. <laughs> that one's already open. I pre-opened it, and then I glanced at it, and then I said, "Yeah, this is worthy of opening on the show." Um, mm -hmm. I thought there would be a note. Mm -hmm. There's not a note. They're simply a bunch of family bracelets. No way. Nice. So, Thank you. There's yours. I'll put mine on. Ebo. Um, I'm going to the... Oh, I like that color. Uh, Bloodman, do you want uh, girly looking green and pink? Do you want pink and black or blue and teal? Dealer's choice. I'm going to give you the pink and black. Thanks, man. This is for Titus and TJ. Okay? okay. Thank uh, you very much, dude. You told me to find the funniest video I could. Do you want me to play it real quick? Yeah, play it, play it, play it. The funniest video imaginable right here. Yep. If a girl, if a girl doesn't <laughs> like to give oral sex. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a deal, deal breaker to me. <laughs> I think it would be. I agree. You know, it, Lucas, for someone who is completely unaware of the show, it's crazy how randomly he's just pulling these videos up. Is that another one of your guys' bits too? It, it actually it is, yeah. No, is this he just knows a, that he knows. Stop doing bit. that. Stop is doing this just that. Just a bit show, huh? You guys just do bits for an hour and a half, huh? <laughs> this is from Drew Flesh from uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Great place, Greenville. What is it? Oh, my gosh. It's an ant farm. No. <laughs> it's a 2024 Carl Ham calendar. Get the fuck out of here. The 2024 Carl Ham calendar. Bringing home the bacon. We haven't talked about Carl Ham enough. I see you've got some school spirit today. You know it. Big wins this weekend for the Hogs in baseball and basketball. Woo Pig Suey. And then Carl over here is a little mad. He huffs. You rang? Hey, Carl. Oh, could you please send me the projections for Q2? No problem, Phil. I'm on it. That could have been an email. <laughs> <laughs> Are these all original comics that this person? Are all original. Uh... Is it laminated? Why does that part impress you? What well, that laminate lamination is not is not. That's the extra step to making it official. Mostly sports. I've made several Carl Ham comic strips, so I turned them into a calendar. It's a nine ninety nine Staples calendar, so that's why it's printed weird. It's fine. Spin the horses to see who can fix it. Credit to J.K. Niner fan and somebody else for the extras I've used to get to twelve months. Okay, so I use somebody else's. Uh, important days have been added to the calendar. Here are some extra jerseys. Uh, okay, we got jerseys in here, too. This is an unbelievable um, package. Yep, so uh, looks like we got a – we have a Clinton Dix jersey. Ha-ha. That was a good one. Thank you, Liam. For uh, Evo. It's medium. I don't Catch. know. Um, this is a uh, – uh, that's a large, so it's a Mighty, Mighty Ducks jersey or Ducks jersey. Is it Ducks or Mighty Ducks still? Ducks. It's just Ducks. Yeah. Okay. And um, that one's large. Maybe this one will be 2X so I can wear it. But isn't that one a Mighty Ducks? 
This one? No, no, no. That's that's. Is that also ducks. That's a ducks. Is that ducks. That's ducks. Yeah, the other one was also ducks. It's alternate. I mean, they use the Mighty Ducks so? logo, but like, it's not. It's not the OG with the purple and the green. Oh, this is Mighty. That's Mighty Ducks. I I mean the Mighty Ducks logo, yes, but it's also. Well, if it's the Mighty Ducks logo, then it's a Mighty <sighs> Ducks jersey. I'll give you this one, but the color scheme is. How isn't could there. you possibly give it to me? It because it's not. Whose logo scheme. is that? The Mighty Ducks. What the color scheme? Okay, so if that's a Mighty Ducks logo, what's the jersey? Mighty Ducks. You're not giving me anything. I'll, I'll give you that one. These are very nice jerseys, by the way. Yeah, they're very high. Brandon, you know who like Clinton Dix? M- Mon- Monica Le- Lewinsky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Topical. Good. Uh, uh, that's good prop comedy which, right yeah. there. Where are we at? Um, do we have any more adver- adver- advertisements? No, I think we're nope. good. Ready? Yeah. yeah. I leave for a week and y'all just stop having it. No, they heard Connor was hosting. And, uh, that is how it goes, typically, yeah. They all disappeared. Morgan Wallen threw a chair? Yeah. Who do you, who do you throw it at? Anybody? Or do you just Street. Do you say, I'm going to throw this chair? Yeah, he just said, fuck it. I forget how many drinks. I think it was on record how many drinks he had. or It, it wasn't like a whole. I don't know Morgan Wallen. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy bad guy he but says, i do know that it seems like every time he gets in trouble he's been drinking yeah he's had some run-ins with the law however there was a time in country music where your arrest record added to your credibility so maybe he's doing that he's bringing back outlaw country possibly <laughs> He's selling out stadiums. Like he's selling out. Uh, can we go through the country artists that, that are hot in the streets today? Sure. Luke Combs. Morgan Wallen. I can't name one song by him. I've That's never. A crime. Um, the only. What? That's a crime. He's the best country artist out right now. All right. <laughs> now Luke Luke Combs did Fast Car, right? Yeah. And so I decided I need to start listening to some of these guys. I started listening to Luke Combs. Pretty good. Pretty Great good. voice, not bad, not yeah. bad. Zach Bryan, I heard on the uh, song, the, the song I talked to you about earlier. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to check him out. Pretty good too. Mm-hmm. You didn't hear him on BFFs? No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm a male. I don't listen to that show. Okay. Uh, so yes. You want me to start? I, you want me to start sending you some modern country people? Would you? I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. Like I. Because I got a little bit of 90s country in me, too. You know that. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. I, I think I would know the guys in the game you like. Yeah. Like, do you listen to Casey Musgraves at all? Not even a little bit, no. I think you'd love Casey Musgraves. Really? I yeah. don't like women singers. Or women. <laughs> Musgraves about, is great. What about Jody Messina? Uh, okay. You like her? Yeah, all right. Yeah. That, that. Uh, let's see. And then, of course, the War and Treaty, which is the best the best thing I've ever listened to in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, Blutman, uh, any country music recommendations? I think you got them all. <laughs> he's nice. not country, but he's hot in the streets. Um, same vein as uh, Zach Bryan, Noah Khan, you might like to. Oh, yeah. He's a little more. He's who? He's folk. He's, he's a little more country. basic, bitchy. Noah Khan? vibe, yeah. That sounds like a church camp. Mm-hmm. He was uh he was singing with Olivia Rodrigo over the weekend. That was a good line. That was good. That was a good line. Mm. Were they building a boat? Yeah. That, where are you going this way? I'm going to Noah Con. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Blutman. <laughs> welcome to the show. You're welcome. Um. But yeah, Morgan Wallen uh, just threw a chair of six stories and it landed in the street in Nashville. Almost hit a cop. Didn't yeah. hit anybody, but kind of reminiscent not totally reminiscent but when conor mcgregor just threw the what did he throw a gurney through a, a ambulance oh, through a, tr- a trash can no he threw the the dolly through the dolly, yeah. like a, a sprinter van that had a bunch of other ufc fighters in it yeah i don't know if those are similar at all aside from just throwing something yeah just chucking it to chuck it you're uh, talking about being on the top of a six story yeah this one's much more dangerous but at the same time, I don't know. I'm just envisioning celebrities just chucking random pieces of furniture or shit. And that's the similarity you needed. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't celebrities know. throwing. Yeah, I, uh... All right, give me some more celebrities throwing stuff. I don't know. Well, those are the only two I could think of. That's why I brought up the McGregor thing. But I don't know what the fallout from this is going to be. Probably nothing. Jose Canseco in a boxing match. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just throwing that. Evo's got some, some good one-liners, man. Hyping up my boy. He's glazing. That's That's, uh, we I already s- said you can't glaze on the show. I said earlier that I overruled it. Are we, we glazing glaze. on the show? Yeah. 
This is a, a, a glazed safe space. Um, What's his name? Lucas. Lucas, give me the second funniest video on the internet right now. Hold on. Let me just get off this page real quick. Yep. Yep. What's he doing? It's Casey yeah, Musgraves. Casey Musgraves ready, just in right, case well, you want yeah. I mean, With Sydney Sweeney. I mean, I guess go back. I... Yep. Oh, that's from when they were on Saturday Night yeah, Live. So this is... I think this is Sydney Sweeney. It was. <laughs> that's Casey Musgraves. <laughs> so I... All I remember from that week is is when Sydney Sweeney did the the end and it went viral because she was wearing the really alien shirt. Yeah. And then she's throwing like she's throwing like ninety eight. And then beside her, the person I didn't know at the time is Casey Musgraves. Yep. She's throwing like ninety seven. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Might be Smoltz and Glavin right there. Well, they weren't really hard throw. Well, Smoltz was. Smoltz threw hard. Glavin wasn't really a hard thrower, so that doesn't doesn't really work. So who would be who would be Maddox and who if. Okay, so who would be Maddox? Who would be I feel like Musgraves would be Maddox because she doesn't throw quite as hard, mm-hmm. and then Sweeney's just throwing. Is- <laughs> He's got the next video pulled up. Go ahead and play it. No, no, that's not the next video. I was trying to get to YouTube. That's on. That's on me. That's on me. Okay. Who else would it be on? <laughs> I'm. I'm just. I'm just letting you guys know I'm taking responsibility for my actions on that. What is Jerry after dark tonight? Um, something to do with mini golf. We haven't said exactly. Y'all, oh, y'all yeah. don't y'all don't know yet, do you? No, I do know. I just need to confirm with Jerry that he's okay with. You need to team. confirm on Tuesday uh, what you're doing on the Tuesday. I mean, that this happens almost every week. It does, yeah, yeah. Also, if they were if you were to just put something out right now and then they didn't do that, the chat would like destroy them. They're gonna destroy them anyway. Yeah, yeah. they do. They do it anyway. But yeah, I'm trying to avoid that. I just need to double check. Okay. Just waiting on that video now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me, give me. Does he have to shit in every hole before he can leave? <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. It's a great challenge. That course looks phenomenal, by the way. Everybody tune into that tomorrow. They've put in so many hours. We, uh, yeah, but the pieces of shit we have working for us will complain. They will yeah. complain. Yeah. There, there's going to be some elements where they're going to complain and it's going to be and, – and then some people are going to get mad, and there's going to be a couple of clips where people yell at each other, and it's going to be – You should play with headphones in the whole time like you're Leo. <laughs> Leo who? DiCaprio. Like, you know yeah. how he does it when he's having sex? Like, you should just tune out all the noise and put yeah. the headphones I in. don't know that he, he – he's a headphone sex guy? I think that's like, yeah. Yeah. Th- really? That's been out there, yeah. It blasts EDM music during sex. Huh. Bet Tom Hanks doesn't do that. Yeah, goat. Hmm. Remember when Tom Hanks got COVID and everybody thought he was going to die? That was the first real sign. He got COVID first. So I was... He got side, that new COVID. <laughs> side story before Lucas pulls up the video. I, was I got in, it whenever you guys... Okay, and then go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is this? You might have to be careful with this because it's Disney. <laughs> That's... <laughs> It's Chopper. That was the second funniest just video. Stop, just stop, just stop, 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 yeah, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> All right, do you want to see? Oh, well, I pulled that up because I thought you'd like that better. This was what I was originally going to pull up, but these videos are too long. Oh, yeah. Brandon, you like The Bachelor? God, uh, w- this one, this one's really good. We're not going to watch it on the show, yeah. but I, I probably do need to cringe, watch the cringiest bachelor moments of all time. I have some recommendations on the best ones if you, if you need that. Isn't that what the video is for? Well, there's you got to find the right one. It's not all of them are as good as you think. All right, uh, let's see. Chief Saholic ordered to pay ten point eight million dollars to bank teller. Yeah, this is the guy who was dressed up as the the giant wolf at the Kansas City we, Chief games. We know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, just for a reference, I don't know if everybody was up to date on the story. I also like how every time you look at a new story of this, th- uh, you don't see his face, really. No. They show you the wolf costume. I think he does have a mug shot recently, but, yeah, nobody shows it. Um, you know, he's going to have to pay up $10 million because if he was... Oh, 1030, can can we, uh, <laughs> can we, can, can we end the show now? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, Mark, can we end the show? I'm going to say we can end the show. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. It has been a pleasure.
Thank you, Brandon. You're a great co-host. And thank you to the boys on the couch. Thank you to Lucas, by the way. No, 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 no. You're Mark. Okay, I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Who's going to be Connor? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This has been the show. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. You want to be Mark. You're Mark. So you're going to end. Spider. Spider can be me. Spider can be me. No, no, he can't be. What? I think we have to spin the horses. To come in and say hello before you end the show, that's all. Okay, hello. Hello. All right. That's all I got. Now we can end the show. All right, so do, would you like to end the show as Connor Griffin? No. No, I no, I want to no. watch. I want to witness. Oh, you watch. Okay. Ebo, let Ebo do it. Let Ebo do it. Ebo, you're, you're – okay. End the show. Are you, are you me, Ebo? All right. He's a me, Ebo? Good, good, good. All right, let's go. Thank you for watching, everybody. We're going to end the show. Uh, Spider's fucking around with the microphone. But until next time, this has been Mostly Sports. Subscribe. That's how ball is done. Uh, <laughs> uh, give it another go. No, let's, try, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Uh, try it, just, just do set it. me up. Set the me music's wrong. Uh, thanks, folks, for watching. Subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. That's how ball is done. <laughs> Family. That's how ball is done. Family. I think you got it. I think you got it. All right.